चक्र ध्वजांग कुशल सत पद राज I want 
that you will go there on my behalf as my messenger and you will deliver my message, my personal message to my beloved gopis and you will console them in this way. So, receiving this order from Sri Krishna, Uttaraji mounted the chariot of Bara, the same uh, golden chariot of Kansa that now belonged to Krishna. And he set off for Braja Vrindavan. So when Uttara came to reach the uh, area of Vrindavan, there he envisioned, he was able to see by Krishna's will, by his divine potency, he was able to see Vrindavan in which Krishna would be present there with his, with Balra, with all the cows and cowherd boys and gopis in the evening time, just as the sun is setting and the beautiful scene of Vrindavan is manifesting and all the dust from the cows is settling on the earth. So Uddhava witnessed that Vrindavan before Krishna had left. He saw how the cows were running here and there, cows were jumping, and how the houses were decorated and all the sounds of glorification of Sri Krishna's pastimes from the Vraja Gopis and Gopas. And Uddhava became so enthralled by this vision. Then at that time, suddenly like a curtain coming down on the scene of a drama, Uddhava now saw that Vrindavan which was devastated completely by separation from Krishna from the day that Krishna had left in the home of Nanda and Yashoda. No cooking had gone on. There were only cobwebs. No one was taking care of their bodies and looking after themselves. Only some people from nearby villages were bringing some milk products for them to consume so they could maintain their lives. But when Yudha became that Nanda Maharaj, he saw the chariot and he understood that Uddhava was the dear friend of Krishna and had come. So Nanda Maharaj, he very cordially greeted Uddhava. And also the various rich bhasis surrounded Uddhava, hoping to hear some news from him about their beloved Krishna. And now Uddhava sat with Nanda Maharaj. And Nanda Maharaj began to inquire from Uddhava, oh Uddhava Ji, how is the son of Sura, meaning Vasudeva? Because he could not immediately ask about his son Krishna. If he would ask about how his son Krishna is, immediately he would completely drown in tears of anxiety and separation mood. So therefore he asked about Vasudeva. And, and he asked, and he mentioned, oh, that King Kamsa was so very cruel. Now he has been killed by a Krishna, but actually it is his own sinful activities that has killed him. And in this way, gradually, Nanda Maharaj finally asked Uddhava, Oh Uddhava, and how is Sri Krishna? How is he remembering his beloved cows, his beloved gopas and gopis? How does he remember his father and mother? And at that moment, Nanda Maharaj became completely absorbed in Krishna, and he became stunned like a pillar, and weeping and weeping. And then he saw Mother Yashoda. Mother Yashoda was so incapacitated by her separation mood, she could not even cordially greet Uddhava. She was only sitting with her eyes closed, weeping and weeping and weeping. She did not want to see the face or see any other vision than her beloved Krishna. So therefore, Mother, uh, Mother Yashoda simply sat there, absorbed in thoughts of Krishna. And at this time, Uddhava began to glorify Nanda and Yashoda. And he began to speak from the point, point of view of Tattva Gyan that, oh, how fortunate you are that you have this relationship with Sri Krishna, who is actually the Supreme Bhagavan, controller of all controllers. He is the eternal Lord Narayan. Actually, he is the supreme transcendent living being from whom all other living beings have come. All of the relationships that we have with him, they are only imagined by his yoga maya potency, but actually no one really has any relationship with him because he is the source of all. And in this way, Buddha uh, was trying to congratulate Nanda and Yashoda that, oh, you have developed such affection for Sri Krishna. You have achieved the ultimate goal of life by having attachment and 
think of swords and Krishna, which even the yogis and the greatest rishis, and even Lord Brahma cannot be so absorbed as you are. This did not really console Nanda Maharaj. Because Nanda Maharaj, he thought to himself, Oh, how unfortunate I am. You are telling me that Lord Narayan has come as Krishna, as my very own son. But then, if you say I'm fortunate, then why has this great personality left my home? Why has he gone away? There is no greater misfortune. And Nanda Maharaj simply weeped and weeped. That night would have stayed there in their home. And later that evening, the brother gopis, they began sitting there by the churning pots of yogurt. And they began to churn the pots of yogurt. And the sound of their singing, the glories of Krishna, began to rise up into the atmosphere and began to mix in the universe. And that beautiful sound of the churning of the yogurt and the glories of Krishna was heard by all. And Uddhava was remarking how much devotion the Braja Gopis have. And the next day, in the morning time, Uddhava was sitting and very shyly, the Braja Gopis, they approached. But before they approached, they thought, who is this personality? He's so beautiful. He resembles Krishna almost exactly. He must be a very exalted friend of Krishna. Oh, we should go and approach him and find out any news of our beloved Krishna. So very shyly, they began to approach Uddhava. They began to request from Uddhava, Oh, Uddhava, please tell us how our beloved Krishna is faring there in Mathura. But when they began to speak about Krishna in Mathura, they began to show their moods, how Krishna has forgotten them. Now he is united with the city women, with the Mathura Ramanis, and he is relishing and tasting their love for him. Why would he come back here to this place for us? We are not even related to him like his father and mother. We have no blood relation. Why would Krishna come back to see us here? And they began to say to Uddhava, Oh Uddhava, Krishna has no attachment to us. It is just like the honey bee, which takes the pollen from the lotus flower and then abandons the lotus flower. Oh, it is just like the bees, which uh, sometimes go into a bee's hive. And then after some time they abandon that place. Or like the birds, which take shelter of a tree. Well, then after some time they give up that tree. Or like a student who learns from his, his teacher. But after learning the lessons, then he gives up his teacher. In this way the gopis began to give so many examples to show to Krishna, to, to show to Uddhava that, oh Uddhava, we have no more hope that Krishna will return to us. But we know that if Krishna returns and he sees us, that we have died in separation from him, then Krishna will die. But he has promised to return. So therefore, oh, we have some hope. And then Uddhava noticed Srimati Radhika, that one particular Raja Gopi who was standing nearby to that place. And she was completely absorbed in Krishna. And she began a conversation with the bumblebee who was hovering there. This is called Brahmaragit. And in this conversation, she began to chastise Krishna. At first, she was saying, Oh, Krishna is so foolish that he has sent a messenger like you. You are just like him. You are very foolish because look at your, your whiskers that you have. It, I can see it has kumkum on your whiskers. That means that you have landed on the flower garland which is uh, on the chest of Krishna and has the kumkum from the breasts of the, of the Mathura Ramanis who he was embracing. So how foolish you are to come to me that you have just touched the flower garland of my rivals. And in this way, Shrimati Radhika began to talk in a very uh, completely bewildered state of Mahabhava, the highest manifestation of Mahabhava for Krishna. And after that, then she began to ask to Uddhava all about Krishna, how he is faring there in Mathura. And Uddhava then began to express to the Braja Gopis and to Srimati Radhika the letter and the message which uh, he had carried for them to hear. 
and he and Krishna began to console the Raja Gopis in that message to tell them that by their love for him they are eternally united with him there is no possibility of separation from him he also talked in terms of Tattva that he is the supreme being who is all pervading within and without that there is no possibility of separation from him so the Raja Gopis heard this consoling words of Krishna and they took this to their hearts and now they felt some uh, some comfort from the presence of Uttabhaji so Uttabhaji remained there in the association of the Raja Gopis in the association of the Vrishvasis for two months and then he observed during that time what kind of praying that they have how his praying his attachment to Krishna is absolutely nothing in comparison with the praying of the Raja Gopis. Srila Gurudev gives us the example that just like when you are standing next to the Himalayan mountains, you are standing at the base of the mountain and you are looking up very high, high, your head goes all the way back. The hat that you are wearing on your head falls off because it is so high, so insurmountably high. And in this way, Uddhava, he witnessed the praying of the Virgin Gopis and he saw that his praying cannot even approach there, that he cannot even expect to desire such praying. Therefore he prayed, Asamaho, Jaranarenu Jushama Hamashyam, Vrindavane, Timabigulma Latosha Dhinam, Yadushya Jam, Sajanamariya Patam Chahitva, Bejur Mukunda Padavim, Shudhir Vrindam. He prayed that I want, that I will be able to take birth here in Braja as a, just a blade of grass, as a shrub, as a creeper. And that I can take the one particle of dust, just charanarenu, one dust particle from the lotus feet of the Braja Gopis, and particularly from that one Braja Gopi, Shimati Radharani. I want that that one particle of dust will come on my head constantly. Therefore, I only pray that I can become a blade of grass because these gopis are so great. Even all the Vedas, they are searching after Krishna. If Krishna is in, inconceivable and unattainable even by all the Vedas. But yet, these Vajra gopis, they have attained Krishna by their devotion and love so much so that they have been able to give up that which is completely insurmountable. The chains which bind one to the social etiquette of this world, which is impossible for the young lady to give up. They have abandoned that and gone to Krishna, their dear most beloved. Therefore, <clears throat> I desire only to become a blade of grass. And then he chanted the glories of the Braja Gopis. Oh, Mande, Braja, Nanda Braja Strinam, the chanting of the Braja Gopis of Sri Krishna's glories is so purified and transcendental and exalted that this purifies the entire universe. So all glories to the Braja Gopis. So that desire of Uddhavaji, it was heard by Sri Krishna. And Sri Krishna awarded Uddhava his desire that he prayed for to take birth in this very place. So all the shrubs in this place, they're actually a manifestation of Uddhavaji. And 5,000 years ago, after uh, Krishna departed from this world, in Dwarka, Sri Uddhava was there, and the queens of Krishna, they were feeling intense separation from Krishna. So Uddhava manifested here, he came here, but the Shandilya Rishi came with the grandson of Krishna, uh, Maharaj Vajradhava. And Shandilya Rishi came here with Maharaj Vajradhava and all of the queens of Dwarka. And when they came to this very place, they began to perform some kirtan. And in that some kirtan, all of the associates of Krishna began to manifest from this very place. Uddhava himself manifested from all the shrubs 
the creepers. And he came out and began dancing and singing in Maha Samkirtan. All the queens of Dwarka were chanting and dancing in separation mood. And then Radha and Krishna and their intimate gopis immediately also manifested in this Maha Samkirtan. So in this very place, Uddhava all these wonderful pastimes took place. So this is our first stop on our Radha Kunda Parikrama. Now we will walk from here to Sri Radha Kunda. So Uddhava Ji is staying here some little distance from Radha Kunda, worshipping from a distance. We should also understand that this grave of the Buddha Gopis is so high and exalted. It is unattainable by us. We must worship this grave above our heads and constantly chant the glories of the Buddha Gopis and Srimati Radhika. So on this day, we are so fortunate to come here, to come to Radhakund under the guidance of our, of our beloved Gurudev. We should bow down in the dust of this place and ask for the blessings of Sri Uddhava Ji that we will also have this realization in our hearts of the great glories of the Buddha Gopi's reign.
that way. Yeah, that's 
श्री नित्यानंद गुरु देशी रघुनाथ कांताथ का स्वामी खुद नॉट रिमेन इन जगन्नाथ पुरी दैट प्लेस वॉज लाइक अ फायर बिकॉज एवरी स्पेक ऑफ डास्ट टू माइंड हिम ऑफ द एसोसिएट्स ऑफ श्री गौरंग देव देर वो मे आने को टू थोला इट पुरी ही डिसाइडेड आई विल गो टू वृंदावन एंड देयर इन आई विल जंप ऑफ द टॉप ऑफ गोविंदन और आई विल एंड माय लाइफ बाय ड्रॉइंग इन यमुना But when he came to Vrindavan, there he had the good fortune to meet Sri Rupa and Sanatana Goswami. They pacified him and gave him a new life, and they also used to come here to visit him. But upon the disappearance of Sri Rupa Goswami, then Sri Ramanath Das Goswami lamented, "Sundayata Mahagostam." Alas, this Vrind this Vrindavan used to give me so much happiness, but now Radhakund appears like the mouth of a tigress, and Jira. Appears like a python to take my life. So, such separation he felt from his guru marga. His bhajan sari is here, and his samadhi is just behind here. Sri Govinda and Sri Gopinath there on their way to Jaipur. They also stayed here for a few days. Therefore, this is the most, top most worshipful place of the Gauri Vaishnavas. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave the six the Goswamis different instructions. One was looked at his Udha to manifest again the lost pastime places of Sri Radha Krishna. Other places were manifested by Sri Bugar Goswami, Sri Rupa Sanatan Goswami. But this Radha Kund was specially manifested by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself. When Sri Chaitanya Dev was performing Parikram and Brajamando, he came to this place and he asked the Brijvasi. Taking rest at Tamal Pala, he asked, "I have heard there is Radha Kund and Sham Kund. Do you know about this?" Then, the, where Radha Krishna performed them, Madhyani Krila, their midday pastimes. Then the bridge passes answered, "Prabhu, we don't know about Radha Kund and Sham Kund, but nearby here is one Kali Khet and Gori Khet, two Pari fields. The villagers used to take water there for watering the vegetables." Then, when Mahaprabhu went there, there was only a little bit of water. Then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu declared, "This Kali Khet is Sham Kund, and this Gauri Khet, Gauri is Shrimati Radhika. Therefore, this is Radha Kund." Therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took bath and declared this Radha Kund and Sham Kund to be the very place. At the same time as this, Mughal Akbar was coming from Dwar from Delhi towards Agra. So with him were so many thousands of soldiers, elephants, camels, horses, and soldiers. All were very fat, thirsty. The general came here and was looking for water. Then Sri Raghunath Das Goswami said, "You can take as much water as you want from these two kuts, these two kets." Then the general said, "Why well, one elephant will finish this in a second?" Raghunath Das Goswami said, "No. No matter how much you take, the water will never be finished." Therefore they did so, and all were astonished. There was one very wealthy businessman. He was in Varuna. That time, but Sri Bhagwan Badrinarayan appeared to him in a dream and ordered, "You should go to Vrindavan. There, on the banks of Radha Kund, is Raghunath Das Goswami. You should take all your wealth and deliver to him for the restoration of Radha Kund and Sham Kund." Therefore, when that businessman came here and told Sri Raghunath Das Goswami about the dream of Badrinarayan, then but Sri Raghunath Das Goswami declined. This is the Nitya Dham, the eternal place. Manifest. This is the eternal place of Sri Radha and Krishna's pastimes. The steps are made of jewels. Everything here is made of wish-fulfilling trees and gold. How can I restore it? But Bhagwan Ram also gave a dream to Sri Raghunath Das Goswami. Therefore, he undertook the work, the seva, of manifesting Radha Kund and Sham Kund. As we will see when we go here, Radha Kund is very straight and simple, four corners, just like Sri Madhu Radhika. But Sham Kund is crooked, just like Krishna. Because when Sri Raghunath Goswami was going to make Sham Kund straight, then in a dream came the five Pandavas, Arjun, Sadhu, Nakul, Bhisma, and uh, Arjun and and Draupadi. They said, "Oh Raghunath Goswami, please do not cut us down. We are here also taking the shelter of Sri Radha Kund." If a Raghunath Das Goswami mercifully, he did not cut those trees. Sri Guruji said, "60 years ago, when we came with our Param Guru, those trees were still manifest there." One time, Krishna had killed one demon who had come in the form of a car. His name was Vasudeva. Huh? Oh, wolf. 
I just have to. Therefore, when the gopis came in, then Krishna went to be with them. The gopis said, don't touch us. You have committed the sin of Gohatya, killing a bull. And Krishna said, that was not a bull, that was a demon in disguise of a bull. The gopis said, whatever it may be, you are very polluted by sin. Krishna said, how I can become purified? The gopis said, you have to take baths in all the waters of all the holy tears of the universe. And Krishna smiled, that's a very simple thing. He took his food and made a hole. From that hole, Krishna called all the waters of all the holy tears in Shamkund and took bath. Then Krishna said to the gopis, you can take bath in my kund. The gopis said, not necessary, we'll make our own kund. They were with their bangles, Radhika and her gopis dark, the very beautiful sea, Radha kund. Then Krishna said, you can take my water. The gopis said, you can keep the water to yourself. And with thousands of gopis with pots on their head, they went to Manasi Ganga to bring water to fill up. See, Radha kund. That time, all the personified holy places fell at the feet of Shivani Radhika and Krishna. Without the service of Radhika, our lives are useless. Please be merciful to us. Please give us a place in your kunds. There was Shimadi Radhika, first being beheaded, and all the holy places also came here to Radha Kund also. Yeah, if he comes then he just does then uh He used to go around though. He used to go around. Then they do you know do and everything. I think he has to be there for the auctioning part. What to do? Do you think it's mine? I think he's right over there. He's dragging out that stuff. I think he's in there. So he comes roaring 
Krishna again, stomping and pawing the earth and snorting. But Krishna, when he goes to whirl and twirl and kick Krishna, Krishna easily grabs him, takes him, swirls him around, just like they did with Beto Kalsura, but this time he throws him about a hundred meters away. And the demon goes flying through the air, hits the ground, and passes out unconscious. Unconscious from the force of this. But he's very valorous, strong, and he wakes up shortly after, and he sees Krishna, and he's enraged, and he comes stomping again, again, pawing up the earth, huge clumps of dirt everywhere, steam coming out of his nostrils, and he comes roaring at Krishna, and then he tries to kick him again, but Krishna just very easily takes his fist and goes crash, right into the mouth of Keshi, breaking his teeth and shoving his head down his throat. And Keshi is stuck. Even though Krishna is just a little boy, he's a bell on the arm and fist of Krishna. And then all of a sudden Krishna's arm begins to expand and become red hot. Red, red hot. And the demon is choking and he begins to perspire and he's whirling here and there. His ears are flopping. Nothing can come out. He begins to choke and choke and choke. And then all of a sudden, just like what happens when you die, he begins to shudder, pass stool, urine everywhere. And then he falls flat on the ground and dies. <laughs> and all the cowboy boys, Jai Sri Krishna! for Krishna, every day in the life of a cowherd boy. It's glorious being a cowherd boy in Vrindavan. So exciting, so happy, what lovely, wonderful pastimes. There's more to tell, but we have a long way to go. So you heard some other elaboration, beautiful by Baba Maharaj, and we will stop here and continue on our way to
So the boatman washes the humanity out of his feet, sprinkles it on himself, drinks the water, splashes all over the boat, splashes all over everybody else. All the gopis are very happy. So they're not a pastimes also. Sometimes Krishna is rocking the boat, the storm comes. Sometimes even the boat sinks. And all the gopis are screaming and screaming. But then it turns out the water is only this deep, like up to their knees. So my Guru Maharaj said that in the spiritual world, the humor there is like Charlie Chaplin. So many funny pastimes. So there's a very transcendental place when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, came to Vrindavan. Uh, Rasananda Prabhu is described from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. When he came to Mathura, his frame increased a thousand times. And then when he came to Vrindavan, his frame increased a hundred thousand times. This is Krishna in the moon of Shimati Radhika, visiting Vrindavan, the place of his pastime. So this particular place, or generally when Krishna came to Vrindavan, all the peacocks, they were crying, crying, oh, hey, come, mayo, mayo, mayo. The cows were coming, licking Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's body, all recognizing the trees are bowing down, showering honey. They're all recognizing, oh, it's our Kanai's come back, our Kanai's come back. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he rested here, and he was chanting and remembering the pastimes. At that time in Vrindavan, nobody was living. So he used to stay in Akurga, and then he would come performing Parikrama. We know that he used to sit at Imlitao, and he would look over the Jamuna and remember his pastimes, his beautiful pastimes with the gopis, every, time, every night performing Ras, and when at Imlitao, uh, when Krishna was remembering Shimati Radhika, Radhika and assuming her complexion in his deep remembrance and separation from Shimati Radhika. So here Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also used to rest and remembering Krishna's pastimes. Also on the altar here, there's the uh, Jagannath deity Murari Gupta. Murari Gupta was associate of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Actually, he's reincarnated to Hanuman. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu once told him that, Murari, you should worship Radha and Krishna. Why are you worshiping Ram? We're all worshiping Ram. If you worship Radha and Krishna, we can have some beautiful Hare Krishna and Kirtan together. So taking this as an instruction from the Supreme Lord, Murari Gupta, he wanted to surrender to Radha and Krishna. All night he was praying, surrendering. But unfortunately, he's crying and crying and crying. In the morning he came to take Tanya Mahaprabhu. He said, what can I do? What can I do? You told me to surrender to Radha and Krishna. You told me to worship Radha and Krishna. But my head is sold at the lotus feet of Ramachandra. Tanya Mahaprabhu was so happy. Oh, you're the real devotee of Ram. Because he's Hanuman, how can he change? His saru is as... Ramda, even Hanuman knows the Lakshmi Pati is the same as his Ramachandra, or Krishna is the same as his Ramachandra. So you can only worship Ramachandra, you can't worship another. So this is the nature, this is the true perspective. So Murari comes to the uh, Sanyasi here, uh, Sanyasi Thakur here, uh, Pariyatik Maharaj. So he said that Murari Gupta is coming here and he brought Jagannath. But when he wanted to leave Vrindavan, Jagannath came to him in a dream or somehow and said, you can go, but I'm not going. So then Jagannath remained here. This is actually the deity of Murari Gupta. Jagannath remained here and he's still worshipped here on the altar. And uh, Rasananda Prabhu reminded me, when he got just close to here, Rasa, Shrimati Radhika, wanted to cross Jamuna with the gopis to get Darshan of Duras Muni. Shimati Radhika complained to Krishna that when I look at your beautiful eyes, I only see your eyes. I can't see the rest of your body. When I look at your beautiful nose, I can only see your beautiful nose. I can't see the rest of your body. So Krishna said, oh, you know your problem. You can't control your senses. So you should go to the rest of body and you should get a benediction from him. So you can control your senses. Then you'll be able to see all of them. So all the gopis, they went to see the rest of body. They wanted to know why. When they came to Jamuna, they said, how are we going to so Krishna came and he said you should tell Jamuna that as Krishna
，我就嗰啲人用佢去傾下，用發電機俾佢傾啦。係啦，咪就就翻嚟翻嚟跟住。嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯